um, and someone like Jeff's obviously gone out of his way to sort of to reach out to Canada and has brought you know a lot of Canadian acts you know into into our territory and and obviously that makes us think that the more that we can work Australian acts back into Canada and the, the, the stronger the foundation I suppose in the relationships and, and as we've been talking sometimes the best thing is to actually have bands that you make contact with overseas uh, who have their own fan base you can play to their fan base and then they can come back and play to yours um, so it's just yeah, it's about reaching out I suppose so I guess using the international conferences not only here but I guess in the States and, and UK there's Australians pretty much in all of them at the moment um, what's your sort of reaction to a band that might just cold call or sort of pitch to you if they send you some really great footage um, you know give you Look, a I terrific think, story is that sort of stuff still happening or there's, is it? there's always bands that are sort of pitching on every level yeah. um, you know when I was working you know at Triple J and um, and Emma can back me up on this the amount like if you're in a position where you're programming any radio station the amount of music crossing your desk is just enormous um, and that job's become increasingly harder as more bands release music you know I think there's a hundred thousand albums released in the US um, each year now, more than 100,000. I think it, it went from 60 in 2006 to 80 in 2007 to 100,000 in 2008. In, in, it just, it's just extraordinary, this explosion in music. So it's impossible to stay across it all. There's always those moments when an email will flick in and you'll go, oh, I'll have a listen to that, just because it's just the timing of it. You've got five minutes, you've got a cup of coffee in front of you and you don't want to do any real work. Um, so, you, you know, it's just the sporadic chance that you might find something. But generally, this business is about recommendation. So if a, a good friend of mine rings me up and says, I'm really onto something, Jeff goes, check this band out, I think they're worth having a listen to, then I'll make, make it my business to check them out because I trust, you know, what he's, what he's bringing to me. So, I, you know, I think the core of this whole business is finding fans and those fans are the ones that are buying your records, but they're also the fans in the business. And because there's oh, I different, like that. yeah, there's different <laughs> I levels. That. I like that. But sure. there's different levels of sort of fan <laughs> engagement, and I truly believe that. Like you can get someone in the business who, who who's going to work with you, and um, and sometimes that they're not going to be really active about it. They're not fans. If they're not driven by your music, if they don't really believe and love what you do, then it's not going to work for you. You know, like the guys that really believe in what you know that whoever they are in whatever part of the business, if they really believe it, they're going to work it hard for you. So it's finding those people, which is why uh, you know, you've got to be so careful if you're signing sort of deals for the world, um, particularly to major labels, particularly to any company that has lots and lots of copyrights or lots and lots of acts, because you just get lost in that. You might have a really passionate group of people working your product in Canada, but then if you sign for the world and, and you know, Warner or Universal in Australia are releasing it, there's no reason for them to get excited because all they're doing is sending profits back home and there's, there's no real sort of fan engagement. No. So that's why it's, you know, it's, unless they're offering you lots and lots of money and, and as a result they're so deep into you and they've spent so much money in the advance that they have to commit you to you on a world level, then of course, you know, you might do it. But if it's, so you've just got to be really careful when deals are on the table to make sure that uh, people are going to look after you, not only in the territory because they believe in the music that you're making, but also in other, other parts of the world. One thing I've heard um, a lot of, I guess, with uh, social media and digital online marketing is oh, you don't need to actually go overseas anymore because the internet, you can find fans and sell your music that way. Um, I guess that there's something to be said for that, but do you, do you find that uh, if an artist would come to you and say, oh, look, I've got, I've got done my Google Analytics and I've gone through my Facebook fan site and I know that there's, you know, 400 fans sitting in Sydney waiting for me, would you book me, Josh? How, how much credence do you guys put on social media in terms of breaking into a new territory nowadays? I, I just think it's huge. Yeah. I just think you can't yeah. underplay how big it is. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, I was on a panel in Australia at a conference recently and I... This uh, the guy that runs Universal in Australia was saying he spends 80% of his marketing budget on digital now. Like so, the majors are even taking it so seriously. Yeah. And just even with a couple of projects that I've been developing lately, I've actually been employing this guy to do digital marketing specifically to blogs internationally. And we're getting so much good feedback. And uh, in fact, one of our bands ended up working with a, a producer in England who basically just read this blog post and loved the band and made contact and then the next thing the band sort of sending them over material and the producer's saying, hey, I'm let, let me do your album for you. 
So you, you just, you know, and that's you the future. find international artists and finding fans in Australia and using that as a bit of a, an in? I, th I think that's going to happen increasingly, yeah. increasingly. Yeah. I and I noticed that YouTube are just about to launch YouTube Live. If that's just been announced in the last sort of 24 hours or something. Yeah. So they're going to actually go to festivals now and broadcast festivals live on YouTube. This is, this is where it's going to happen. You know, so once you get those sorts of big, big events, YouTube becomes like a you know, TV network and you can go and you know, watch and listen to any band you know, at major festivals anywhere in the world. Yeah. Can just I, on sorry. that, I, just quickly on that, whether working locally or internationally, I think that's a, you know, having your social media and your stats there is going to be beneficial anywhere in the world, any market, any manager, any label, any agency, it works on all levels. Um, show your stats, have your stats there, show that you have fans so that anyone will engage with you. Um, you get a lot of, and I'm sure everyone's the same, um, a lot of people reach out to people in the industry saying, oh, here's my stuff, go to my whatever page. Yeah, cool, we get plenty of those. Send the stats or go, I have this many fans in Sydney, I have this many fans in Melbourne, or I have this many fans in Vancouver, I have this many in Montreal, and work it that way. I think you'll always get a much more positive response if you work your social networks properly and then you collect the information from them to present. Can I just ask in the room, like you're all sitting in a session about Australia, who's actually done a little bit of digging to see if anyone in Australia is listening to their stuff at the moment? And are they? Yeah? <laughs> yeah cool. Actually, part of the biggest fan base of the modern bands that I work with is in Australia. Fantastic. Yeah, it's going really well. We've actually done a lot of online album sales. In, like, I guess I couldn't give you the name of the What's the name of the band? Uh, the Architects. Okay. Yeah. So you had three of them outside at once. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately interested. Yeah. <laughs> no, I find it, it's quite fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> You've had too many Jeffs. Um, I just wanted to, we are getting close to time, but Rob, your, your publishing side, um, the idea of freeing up a territory like I, you know from, from my experience and it's probably from a long time ago most publishing deals tend to be for the world how do you kind of work then with international artists do you isolate australia new zealand or yeah. are you looking at some publishing uh, deals or? very much so like um like i think we're in a really exciting period now yes there's an explosion of music and it's never been as competitive as it is at the moment but it also means that you can take control of your own career I think it's really important not to be too paranoid about deals. Like some bands, I think, for me, you know, just don't want to sign anything either because they're just scared that they're locking up their rights. You can actually start really slowly. Like I, I've done publishing deals on one song, you know, just for Australia and New Zealand for three years because, and then I did that at mid -M. I There was this Irish artist that I really liked. She gave me a CD. I liked only one song on it, but I thought that that one song I could probably go and place somewhere. And I said, why don't you just give me that one song? And she ended up signing a deal a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to actively going to, going to go out and find you know find somewhere to place that song. And if I can find a good placement, at that point I might then go. Well, how about you give me an album? How about we do a couple of albums? How about we cross you over onto the label side? So I think so that's as a whole, pretty unique though. It's unique, but it? I, but I suppose what I'm saying is that you can structure a deal any way you want to structure it. You can do it, you know, like generally the way I like to work is just start off with the territory, like if it's an international band, it's ridiculous for me to be signing something, you know, out of Australia for the world for an international band. So I generally just look at the territory first and I, I generally look at, at a release, like I'm not trying to lock you in for the next three albums or anything because it's about building the relationship. I want to know that you're delivering consistent material and you want to know that I'm working for you. So, um, and we do that over a sort of a three to a five year sort of term on, on one release. So that's generally sort of a, a standard way of approaching it. But, but every artist is different and it depends on, you know, on what level you work on. What is going on there? <laughs> do we need to get out of this building? No. Yeah. <laughs> is, this, is this a fire it's drill? Fire. All we heard on the bus was that it catches on fire a lot here yeah. at EEI. Do we need to leave? Um, are there any questions? 
You now know everything? Uh. <laughs> I hope so, yes. Uh, I'm curious about uh, delivery of music to radio in Australia, particularly in 